Today I have the privilege of talking about what I did this summer in Paugada, which is a rural southern Indian village, um, where we were looking to introduce solar power as an alternative to the unreliable grid in the area. So without further ado, let's jump right in. Um, so my friend Dave, who's here today, is a student teacher, and he tells me that before and planning for each lesson, the first thing he does is list the three things that he wants everybody to walk away from his lesson remembering. So I like, because I'm an engineer, I'm going to put that into three numbers. <laughs> and uh, these are 14, 320, and 4 and a half. And what these represent, 14 is the number of hours in a day in a village that they'll go without electricity. 14 hours is a long time. I think that probably we go the longest, about 20 minutes at a time without power. So thinking about what that means and how that affects life on every level, from computers, which is what we were aiming to address, to lights, to fans, to refrigerators, to TVs. Everything is completely changed by this lack of access to power. But contrastingly, the area has over 320 days a year with over 10 hours of sunlight. So if we can use that sunlight to address this power situation, we'll be coming towards a sustainable way to take care of this 14 hours. And that's what we're aiming to do. And this four and a half hours um, is a representation of what we did this summer. Um, the system that we designed is capable of supplying three computers with four and a half hours of backup power when the grid fails. So um, just today I want to briefly talk about a little bit of the background for the situation, what we did and what we're doing now because the project is a continuing one um, and we're looking into the future now. Uh, first, Nana Bodhani School, where we were at. Um, it's a little, uh, not sorry, I shouldn't say little, it's a big school for, in a little village just north of Bangalore. Um, it's, it was founded in 1990 in a one, uh, one classroom, one, school, one room school, and now it's grown to the largest school in the city, in the village, with over 1,000 students, uh, over 50 full-time uh, professor teachers. And the reason for this big draw is because it's an English medium school. Uh, that means that all classes, with the exception of languages, are taught in English. And the relevance of that is all higher education is taught in English as well. So if uh, students are going to go on to pursue degrees and escape this rural poverty that they live in, they need to have a, a good background in English to compete with their urban counterparts. Um, within the school, the computers, uh, they try and offer up what education they can, but that's pretty limited because of the resources. They've only got 16 computers and two full-time teachers for over a thousand kids. And because of this lack of infrastructure, um, they can only offer one hour of computer access to the students per week. And if we think about it, can we do a show of hands to see who spends more than one hour a day doing email? Yeah, there's a lot of us. I know I do for sure. And so this is a real issue because if students have one hour of computer access that they have to share the computer with other kids, how are, how are they going to learn? I don't, I don't see it being a feasible solution. And this one hour of computer access is not always a guarantee because there's 14, up to 14 hours a day without power. And if that coincides with their one hour of computer access for the week, nothing doing. Um, so that brings into the next issue. Uh, the power situation in the area. Uh, this is a picture um, from the first day that I went to the school to go see the computer lab in action. And lo and behold, the power cut out for the day, so this is the picture that we got to see. Uh, the computers that they have not being used. Uh, the reason for this is the process called load shedding. Uh, Karnataka, the state that Nana Bodhani School is in, gets 60% of their power from hydro. The hydro project's in the north. So when the rains don't fall, which is becoming more and more often, uh, they can't generate the power that they think that they have. And as a result, the utilities have to shut off sections of the grid to prevent their equipment from getting damaged. And so um, what they do is they start with the rural populations first because they pay the least for their power. So they'll drop sections of the grid off for longer and longer periods. And then this year, because this is one of the worst in the history of um, independent India, yeah, these periods of time without power can get as long as 14 hours at a time. But again, to address this, we, the area gets over 10 hours of sunlight over 320 days a year. So it's really the ideal site for introducing solar power because not only is there a need for a reliable energy source, 
uh, they have the resources to make that happen. Um, so that was the background for our project. And when we went in, uh, the first thing we did was decide what we wanted to power. And that first choice was computers, because computers are becoming more and more relevant to the education. Um, so after picking, picking out what we wanted to power, we came up with a design addressing the technical aspects. Then we found somebody to buy the stuff from. Uh, we figured out a way to get the stuff from the city of Bangalore out to the village that we were in. Um, we figured out a way to set it up and did that. And then finally, to make it a more formal thing, we uh, had an official function to um, introduce the new lab into the school and uh, dedicate the system to the lab. And as I said, this is a project that's already in motion and continues to be. So even when I was there for the two months, we're already making the next steps to making this, expanding the system for what we were, from where we were at. Um, and so the majority of the time I was there, we were doing business meetings, trying to find just the right person to give us what we wanted for the right price. Prior to going to India, I did a little background research and found a place in North India that we could buy um, a system for $2,000 that would power one computer for 10 hours. Uh, so when I was going to India, I thought that's kind of the approach we would do. I'd probably go there, travel up to the north, pick up the system, and come back. But my uncle, who, was, who I was working with almost exclusively, um, suggested that we try and find something more close to home. Because um, moving around in India is not the same as moving around the US. And we couldn't just hire a truck to drive us out. So um, we went to this, uh, about three days after I landed in India, we went to this um, company, Hynetics, in Bangalore. And they gave us a quote for a system for $2,700 to power two computers for six hours. And so although that was closer, it was more expensive. And their quotation relied on um, these government subsidies. And government subsidies in India mean you have to get into the bureaucracy, which means months. And since I was only there for two, two months, and we wanted to get something in that time period, that wasn't a very feasible option. So we looked elsewhere and um, talked to these people about two weeks after that, two, three weeks, uh, Vprof Electronics, also based out of Bangalore. Um, their system quotation was for $2,600 to power three computers for four hours. So it was slightly cheaper than the other quotation that we had for slightly more power, but still kind of out of the ballpark of what we wanted to do. Because we were looking to spend as little as possible to establish a proof of concept. Just to show in this initial stage that we can, solar power is a viable option, and then to expand on that later. So finally, uh, we talked to this company, Powertronics, and right from the get-go, it felt like a really smooth, it was going to be a smooth transaction, and it's what we wanted to do. So um, after a couple of meetings with them, our final design was for $1,400, almost half the cost of some of the other quotients we had seen, to power three, three computers for four and a half hours. And that was pretty awesome. Um, I remember after we finalized the deal, and like I put the 2,500 rupees, or 25,000 rupees on the desk. It was just kind of like one of those feelings like, yeah, we're doing it. It's happening. And it, it was awesome. <laughs> um, so this is just a picture at that final meeting at Powertronics. Uh, I'm in the middle. And then this is my uncle and his good friend, Anand, who were instrumental and my mentors for the whole project. Uh, this is a picture of us bringing the solar panel back on top of the van to, um, is it cutting it off? to the village. And uh, the reason we're pulled over is because a cop saw us driving down the highway with this big cardboard box on top and grew a little suspicious. So he was wondering what was going on, but we showed him the receipt. It is a solar panel, and we were allowed to keep going. Uh, this is the next day after we got back, um, actually putting the solar panel up on the roof of the building. And this guy crouching underneath is the engineer from Powertronics. And he really had his work cut out for him, because um, this is his first time doing a job in the field. And you can tell there was an army of people surrounding him the entire time he was doing it. Because the whole village was interested in what this new, what is solar technology? And for me, it was my first real experience with solar panels. So I was clicking away the whole time. But he, he handled the pressure really well. And the first time we hooked everything up together, it worked. So then two days after that, we come to this. Kind of the picture that makes the project, in my mind, worth doing the students actually using the computers for the first time. Um, this was at the dedication ceremony that we had um, about, I think that was August 14th, about four days before I left. 
So we were really kind of crunched right up to the last minute just to make sure everything works out. And I hope this works. Um, this is a video of the inauguration for the computer lab that we had. This is a, a local businessman, kind of the hot shot of the area. Uh, he came by to grace us with his presence. <laughs> <laughs> and there's an army of us up on top. And these are two of the teachers who had blessed the solar panel just previous to that. Um, OK. So just really quickly, I just wanted to go through what we did this summer. Uh, before we came, the school had one computer lab that had 16 computers in it that relied completely on the grid power. So that means when the grid power failed for up to how many hours? 14, yeah. Uh, it couldn't be used at all, which was really a, a frequent thing. So we were trying to address that by reducing the reliance on uh, the grid. So what we did is we put three computers in this new uh, computer lab and added the solar panel on top of the lab. And how the system works is usually it runs on grid power, but when that grid fails, it switches over to a battery system. And the battery system is powered about half by the solar panel and about half by the grid. So it's a good first step, but it's definitely not the last, because the school still relies on the grid. So before I left, we uh, got in motion the next plans, which is to consolidate both these two computer labs into one and power the whole thing with solar power. So those are the next steps in the project that we're hoping to do, to move to completely powered by solar power for the whole day. Um, and we generated the cost. Powertronics said it would cost about $13,000 to do. So that's what we're doing now, looking into government subsidies and talking to different organizations around campus to see if we can make that happen. And so that's kind of the business aspect. But I just wanted to share one story for me that is kind of a motivating reason to return. Um, I got to know Hema pretty well, who this picture is of. And on one of my last days at the school, she gave me a letter. And on the end of the letter, it said, um, don't forget that you had a sister in Paugada. And that kind of sentiment to me reflects, it helped me to remind what it means to do community service. Because it's more than just going in and then walking out. Uh, we set up relationships and to be called, to have her call herself my sister, that's a responsibility on me, I feel. And until this project is finished, I'm not going to feel like I've fulfilled my commitments to the school. So that's kind of part of the reason why I want to go back. And so, I, yeah, I just want to thank everybody at the school for allowing me this opportunity to join their, to join their culture and, and do this work and get to know them, as well as the two gentlemen who served as my mentors and supervisors and critics a lot of the time, too. <laughs> <laughs> and then all the other people whose pictures I don't have. Uh, and the list is long, especially the Center for South Asian Studies, again for just making this opportunity possible to see that, yeah, we can change the world a little bit. And um, yep, that's, that's what I have to say. So I'd like to welcome any questions that you might have. <laughs>